Now, listen, um, I'm really glad that you that you had a, made a little bit of time to, to talk to us. Everybody seems to be going online. Um, you know, Instagram is blowing up. Zoom is blowing up. I saw a very funny meme saying that Zoom was behind the outbreak. Yeah, yeah I saw that one. The Scooby-Doo one. Platform <laughs> just blown up. But listen, man, I, I want to talk to you about some serious things. I want to talk to you about some um, important topics. Um, and for those of you that don't know, uh, Simon is an uh, uh, incredible dentist. He's uh, uh, somebody who came on my radar uh, quite a while back uh, at a meeting in London. He's uh, very, very proficient with digital technologies. So he's one of, I'd say, in the UK, one of the most advanced dentists with digital workflow. Uh, he owns his own practice with his wife, Megan, in, uh, in, in London, and uh, you know, high-end practice and very high-end dentistry, uh, lectures all over the world for uh, uh, comprehensive digital interdisciplinary dentistry. He's a great educator, and as a result of that, he's the scientific chair for the British Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, which uh, is quite a significant role. The British, uh, I'm a proud member of the BACD. We thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, the British Academy of Dentistry has a, a very powerful heritage of, uh, you know, a great uh, dentist being involved in this project. And uh, you put together a great show. Unfortunately, last year in November, I couldn't make it, but uh, hopefully this November in Edinburgh. In Edinburgh, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. We'll talk about that later and what people uh, will have in store for that meeting in Edinburgh. What a great venue, by the way. Um, and to everybody that's uh, never been to Scotland, uh, make sure you book a few extra days to go and see the beautiful, beautiful uh, land. One of the best cities. Love Edinburgh. Uh, city, so much fun. And um, yeah, so you, you have been, uh, whenever I interact with you on a personal level, uh, I always find, you know, you're very structured, you're very organized, uh, you're very, very professional, incredibly punctual. Um, and, you know, these things I, I respect a lot. And I've been following the evolution of your dentistry. I mean, I'm, I'm old, I'm 47. How old are you? Uh, 33. 33. I mean, what you've done in, I mean, I'm a generation ahead of you, you know, and, uh, um, what you've done in your career in the UK, and I want to talk about that for a while, um, is, is, is actually it's quite actually incredible. Quite incredible. Uh, it really is. Uh, you. Uh, you should be very proud of your work, very proud of your, proud of your achievements. Uh, it's not easy to stick out. Um, you know, you, whenever you stick out in any form or fashion, you know, you've been awarded best young dentist here and there. Uh, you know, you've been on, ladies, you've been on the cover of, uh, GQ magazine and all of this. Not quite a cover, but yeah, I've been in well, GQ. <laughs> uh, We're still working on the cover. <laughs> and, and, and I, I speak from my own experience. I've done that as well. I've, you know, I've been on television. I've done all of that. And I think a huge high, Louis, I think um, a huge part of when you, when you give up of yourself to go on television and to be in the public eye, not just speaking to dentists, but also speaking to the general public, Inherently, there's a lot of jealousy involved in that. And, you know, the, the people with the smaller minds, uh, they get very jealous because you've got this unfair advantage uh, over them in terms of marketing or whatever. And there's fine lines between what's ethical and what's not. Um, I know I got a beating uh, when I did my first TV shows back in 2005, Simon. You know, I was on national television and magazines and stuff. And, you know, uh, Nobody goes on television saying, oh, my life is terrible. Of course, you go, yeah. oh, my life is fantastic. Everything's incredible. And I did that before social media, so I never really got the kickback. Did you get a lot of negative kickback by your, you know, I think, awesome and very necessary, uh, you raising awareness, you and Rona Skander and a bunch of other friends that you're involved with, and we're going to talk about your amazing new products in a while. But um, do you get a lot of kickback? Do you feel that a lot of that's unfair? Yeah, I mean, I know we've spoken about this at length, and and I think there's a lot of similarities in in where I'm at now with with uh, sort of your pathway as well. Um, but yeah, I've I've had a, a, especially this year, I've had quite a lot of uh, what I would describe as trolling, a lot of sort of negative um, opinions and attitudes shared about me 
online regarding a whole host of things from how I do my hair to how I dress to the way I do my dentistry to um, uh, to do with Parler, our, our brand that we'll talk about later on. Um, and, and almost sort of my ethical credibility has almost been brought into um, brought into question. Um, and that's certainly something that I pride myself on is, is being an ethical human being and my an ethical dentist. And um, that's more important to me than anything than, uh, than being in GQ or being successful or anything like that. I'd rather be an ethical human being than any of those things. So, yeah, yeah, those sort of things are really very hard. Um, I spoke to you about it. I spoke to Kyle Stanley about it. And um, it was really reassuring to hear that, I'm sure it's never the right word, but to hear that you guys have been through exactly the same thing. And that kind of made me feel like, oh, okay, maybe maybe I'm not doing something wrong here. Maybe this is just part of the territory and I need to get a bit of a thicker skin. I've always, I've always struggled with it a little bit. <laughs> Man, you know, uh, for everybody just joining us now and, and, and watching this, you know, this topic is going to be a very heartfelt um, generational conversation between two dentists that have been very much in the public eye um, and that are staunch advocates in, you know, quality dentistry and trying to be a beacon not just for dentistry, but also for patients to understand where dentistry is headed. And I think um, with the changes that are happening in dentistry around the world from, you know, transition from analog to digital dentistry, uh, and the fact that dentists most times are ill uh, represented in society, you know, Hollywood portrays the dentist as being a stressed out guy with 1980s technology. Just look at Nemo. The dentist in Nemo was a horrible guy. And there's a generation yeah. of children that grew up thinking that the dentist is evil and that brackets. Yeah. And so, yeah. so any country, any country, and I spoke about this at the American Dental Association. I was invited by them to give a keynote lecture in San Francisco in September. And I spoke about how consumers and technology are driving change in our profession. And I, you know, one of my slides was, you know, shouldn't Hollywood have a better role to play in protecting uh, the, the brand of dentistry? Because companies, yeah, yeah. God knows companies aren't doing it. You know, Colgate, uh, Pepsodent, uh, Oral-B, these big brands, they're not defending the dentist. You know, they're there for the patient. So I think that uh, at the end of the day, Dentists need role models, uh, and those ro role models will be public figures. Uh, naturally, you know, you're a good-looking guy. You're well-spoken. You you can not only talk the talk, but you can walk the walk. You're, you're also a very good dentist. You're a very accomplished dentist. And I don't think what a lot of people understand is that your job is probably harder than most people because you are in a spotlight. So that means, you know, you really have to protect yourself scientifically, credibility, you know, your credibility, your ethics. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, and that, that brings that brings a lot of stress on itself. To be honest, when you when you know that you've got a target on your back, and if you if anything goes wrong, which it always does in dentistry because nothing has a hundred percent success rate. Um, if something goes wrong in the wrong patient and they decide to take a disliking to you or something like that, it'd be lovely to think that the profession had your back and that they would support you because they know you've been doing clinically what's in the best interest for the patient. I, I don't unfortunately I wish I did but I don't feel that way and I think you're, you're what I the thing that first because I've, I've I've been following you Miguel since when I was a dental student and um, when I um, when I first saw your stuff online the thing that really gripped me was that actually you could and Rona's got this same amazing skill which is that you can speak to patients and the general public about dentistry in a way that they understand that doesn't lose credibility from the professional side and that's such a difficult line to run down you've got some people who are very good at speaking to the general public but they promote the, if you speak to a dentist about what they're saying it's not correct it's this professionally scientifically it's not accurate whereas you run down that line and i hope to run down that line as well which is that i can communicate effectively with the general public so that we can improve our PR. We must have one of the worst PRs out of all the professions in the world. Um, and that definitely doesn't help with mental health, I don't think. Um, but also maintain that professional credibility, which I, I do crave. And that's why I love lecturing. I love teaching about dentistry because I'm incredibly passionate about it. And I want it to be done to the best of everyone's abilities. So it's, I think that's why we're, we've always been on the same page in that regard. Well, 
you're, you're completely right. Um, um, I think that let's just take this conversation out of dentistry for a while. Um, there's a lot of kind of, you know, there's a bunch of different types of people in this world. And, you know, you have people that are just angry. They're just angry people. They're, you know, their life isn't going that well. Um, they're, you know, probably not as lucky with the ladies or, uh, you know, they haven't had luck in their lives. And luck is, you know, they, they, I don't know, the parents have got had a bad divorce, whatever. There's so many things in life that could make yeah. you bitter. Yeah. And then, you know, you've got this guy coming along that does something just the same as you. He's got the same, you know, set of rules that you have. And all of a sudden he's winning. So let's take an example for a football player. I mean, you know, you've got your superstar Cristiano Ronaldo, and then you've got a, you know, a football player who's also good looking. He's been really talented all his life. He's hardworking, but the guy's just not leaving the, you know, third league and, He's, he, he, he's not making it big. You know, that guy inevitably, if he's put in enough hours and has really worked hard and he's like, well, why's that guy got the success and why don't I have the success? It's basic human nature to feel if you're, you know, being beaten quite a bit to, to not feel successful. But a lot of people, they don't understand how hard it is to be in a position where you actually be, have to, you know, you, you're allowed to be a role model. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, me being, on television, you know, yeah, me being on television, me being on stage, you being in magazines, doing your interviews, doing the amount of work that it takes to do that and then the mental stress that it takes to make sure you're not offending. I'll give you a little anecdote. I went on TV about 10 years ago, live, live. Now, a lot of people think, you know, when you're talking live and then they come back and they rip you a new one because you yeah. made a mistake. Yeah, I've done live TV once before. It's so stressful. Yeah, <laughs> and I basically said uh, uh, on that national television in Portugal that there were 38 teeth in the mouth. <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm a bit dyslexic. I'm shit with numbers. And uh, so I was like, yeah, because, you know, the human had 38 teeth. And, blah, blah, and I just, you know, I was talking about something completely different. Oh, my God. The internet went crazy the next day. Everybody was saying, uh, now we know how he makes so much money. He invents you know, six more teeth. Uh, I was, man, I, I felt so devastated. Yeah. So I actually spoke about this with a clinical psychologist. I, I've never shared this with anybody, but I, I did have a clinical <laughs> psychologist on my team uh, at the White Clinic for many years. And um I think I studied, I, I suffered uh, from like post-traumatic stress from all of the negative reviews I got from my colleagues. I mean, I had the public, the public love it. You know, your, your girlfriend's friends, your wife's friends, you know, your, yeah. your friends, the people at the pub, so on and so forth. They're like, oh man, he, he's a rock star. But then the people yeah. that you want, the people that, you know, that you really want, your peers, that you, they want you to respect you, they're yeah. like trolling you and like, you know, waiting for you to make a mistake so they can jump. Yeah. How, how do you deal with that? <laughs> Badly. <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, Miguel, you, you couldn't be speaking to my own personal truth any more accurately than you are right now. That's, ex that's exactly how I feel. Anytime I do anything, I'm so conscious of not offending anyone and making any mistakes. And, and, do, you and, think uh, you're, and do you think you're not doing more than you could because of that fear? Yeah, absolutely. So I, 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 po I post maybe a tenth of the amount of content that I create with my team and with all the work I do on content creation dates. I probably post a tenth of that amount that, I'm, that I create because I'm nervous about either it, it's like devaluing the profession or it's, it's not quite right for my personal brand or the case I don't think is absolutely perfection, so I'm not willing to post it. And, um, and that's bad in some ways because it, it normalizes the exceptional, which I think is a negative point of social well, media. There's two things um, there. There's two things there. One, and, and first of all, me too. Yeah. Hashtag me too. <laughs> um, I, I stopped posting clinical cases on my Facebook and on Instagram. I post the ones that are literally, you cannot find fault with them. I don't use Photoshop like yourself. I know you don't use Photoshop. Um, and, um, you know, I, I know that because you have a target that big on the back of your skull, 
you are probably one of the most ethical dentists in the world. Yeah, you have to because, be. <laughs> no, no, you have to be, right? So Even anyway, if you don't want to be, you have to be. <laughs> getting back to it, it's like, like, that's such a damn shame because the amount of cool things that maybe aren't perfect, that maybe, you know, you tried uh, um, to do it, that you're not helping a lot of people. A huge, probably the greater part, I'd say 90% of all dentists in UK or the world, because I'd say your, your biggest haters are in the UK. Remember, you always hated the most in your backyard. All right? I've, I've, I, don't, I, I, I believe I have never been invited by an official dental organization to speak in Portugal. Really? I have lectured in Portugal. But usually it's a foreign organization that sets up the meeting in Portugal. So, you know, I, of course that hurts, you know. It's uh, a lot of students actually think I refuse. So if there's any Portuguese people watching this, any university asks me to lecture at that university, I will lecture for free tomorrow, all right? Yeah, okay, well, that's, that's great. I, I hope some of them are watching it. Oh, what a great trip. And, 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 and you, you know that that's difficult to book me. But anyway, um, I think that that's sad. I think that... 90% of young dentists who aspire to be like you, the way I inspired you all those years ago, you could also inspire other people. But that fear of being criticized is limiting a lot of beautiful work that you're doing. So we need to discuss this. We need to discuss how trolling is, has a super negative effect. I believe that it changed with society as a whole. Like today, body shaming is unacceptable right? You get cancelled if you body shame somebody, right? Yeah, of course. I think that we should kind of work in the dental community that shaming somebody or, or it's okay to disagree, but you should, yeah. be polite, you should be polite. You should have a constructive criticism. You should offer an alternative and, you know, not just say something with the, the intuitive um, and, and, and aim to hurt you know but yeah. if you're going to say something mean at least be constructive i don't Absolutely. think that, that i don't think that happens in dentistry and i think it's a shame because i know myself i i stopped posting my cases um mostly because people are just rude not because of the negative i think as and i i hope that i can inspire people because i got so much shit 10 years ago because of my tv shows i realized that the only thing i could do was make myself bulletproof with my CV. And, and, you know, I think, uh, if you look at my CV, I've done over, you know, 250 or three note keynote lectures in over 55 countries, national geographic, so on and so on. You're going to do the same thing. I'm certain of that. It gets to a point where you, re you really want to, excuse me, you want to compare CVs. Uh, if you want to criticize me, at least be at the same table. So there's very few people on earth today that can sit and say, well, I, you know, and, and that I'll listen to. Otherwise, it's just barking, and, and, I, and that doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. And so do, you feel, do you feel now then, obviously at that time, 10 years ago, you felt you, it, it obviously hurt a lot. Do you think if, if the same thing happened today, it would just be water off a duck's back, or do you think you never quite get over that? I, 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 could you re rephrase that question? Because it's a good question. So... Do you think that you have the emotional fortitude now because of your maturation as a clinician and as a, an international speaker? Because you, because you are so, because you're world class. Do you think that fortitude protects you emotionally yes. against well, no. Um, well, trolling? No, no. Um, because the people who I respect are probably now the most powerful people in dentistry. You know, if I, you know, I, you see it, you know, we belong to, there's certain chat forums and stuff of the Formula One guys, you know, of which you're part of, you know that. And all of a sudden you get, you know, a phone call from a guy, dude, you know, you shouldn't be doing that or what, you know. So I think that we all depend on each other's opinions and benchmark yeah, peer review in, in life. life yeah, life. Peer, I mean, peer review, it's part of medical science, right? To have somebody on, uh, on at the same, in the same field. But on, quite honestly, there's, a, there's an American term called uh, the table stakes, uh, uh, which is you've worked, the people in the discussion are kind of at the same level, right? 
right? Uh, I don't think criticism should be democratic. You know, one thing is volume. You know, if you, yeah, you got the people yelling, yelling, or you've got a number of people that are criticizing you, but one person yeah. that doesn't, that's not even in the same league as you, that doesn't have any of your track record, don't, you know, don't pay attention to that because it's just, it's going to, it's going to consume you. Um, I used to think about replying to these people. That's what they want, you know, but it's not just in dentistry, Simon. It, it happens. You've got young kids committing suicide online because they're being body shamed by trollers and the parents don't know about it. It's the yeah. same with us. It's the same with yeah. us. And I, I honestly, I commend you and, 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 and Kyle Stanley from Los Angeles to talk about this and, you know, the mental health, you know, and, but let's go back to basics. Um, the fact that people are criticizing does limit the amount of work that you produce. I don't think you should stop producing it. I think that, um, you know, some of the greatest musicians in the world didn't listen to their managers, their didn't managers. listen to their agencies, yeah. didn't listen to the Queen and Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> You know, so if you want to, if you want to really make a, a difference, and I think UK dentistry, my friend, really, really, really needs to be shaken up. And there's very few people. I mean, we've got the same friends in the dental community, and more than ever, um, UK dentistry needs to stop being scared. And I know, you know, I'm a general dental council registered dentist. I have been for many years. That means for people that aren't in the UK, I'm actually licensed to practice in the UK. My mother's a British citizen. I have a British passport. So if I wanted to go and work and place implants tomorrow in Simon's clinic, he'd have to invite me and I would accept and I would go. I would be, I would be legally uh, okay to do that. Yeah. People say, you know, why, why, you know why I never opened a clinic in, in the UK, Simon? How come? Because everybody's getting sued. People are killing themselves because they're getting sued. Could you just give me an example without saying names of the kind of things dentists are being sued for in the UK? Uh, well, I mean, anything, anything failing. So, that, and, and I think that the really sad thing. I heard a 10 year old root canal that developed a cyst patient got sued. Really? And won. I heard that a patient, that the dentist testing the water jet sprayed water over a patient and got sued because for in, uh, in unprofessional uh, behavior. Uh, what's the craziest yeah, I mean, story? And, and the thing is, you, you hear about, there's been a couple of people who I know, and I've seen their, their work clinically, and it's, it's incredible. I mean, they're incredible, incredible clinicians, and they're getting sued for clinical uh, issues and it, it just it, the, the things don't add up. I think the problem in the UK is we have a no win, no fee situation. So someone can just why why wouldn't I have a go at suing you if I'm going to get my implant for free? So um, you've got so you've got a dental community, dental society. So a dental uh, the, the 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 official dental governing body is faster to award victory to a consumer, to a patient, than to a dentist. And when they get sued, their insurance goes up, right? And it creates a lot of stress because this is all made public. So these dentists, a lot of dentists are scared of doing new things in dentistry as well because, for example, the socket shield technique. I heard yeah. that, you know, our friend Howie Gluckman, we've got, you know, that's you, we've got uh, Luis Besser, who's, uh, I think he was watching us, we've got you know, uh, some of the top guys in the world advocating a socket shield technique, yet if it goes wrong, you could be sued, right? Absolutely, and I think that the problem is, and again, it comes down to the discussion from earlier that you don't feel like the profession has your, has your back because socket shield is a perfect example. If, if, let's say if I did a socket shield on an upper central and that implant started failing, which there's a percentage chance that it could do regardless of how well it is placed. Uh, and they go to the dentist down the road, that dentist could, could quite easily then say, oh, they've left a bit of the tooth behind. It's been a failed extraction and um, they haven't realized and it's, it's incompetence and, uh, 
and inc incorrect dentistry. And yeah, the problem is obviously unless things have got years and years and years of evidence supporting them, which if we always waited for that to develop new procedures and techniques, we would never develop because everyone has to do something for the first time. And, um, and not just that, and, and medicine, general medicine, not just dentistry, has always evolved in leaks, you know. New techniques need to be adopted. You have to yeah. try them. And there's a saying, which is, you know, to the best of my knowledge, in the dentist I was in 2010, I did things in 2010, which I'm not happy of today. But this is what the top dentist in the world, you know, I've been lecturing for 18 years now, you know. I've always been yeah. the state of the art, the latest trends. Um, yeah. and everything, you know, there's, there's other pe peers that are doing it and stuff. But so from what you're telling me now is, and we're building this conversation. And by the way, everybody on Instagram, there's a webinar happening. Uh, so if you, uh, want to see this later, Simon will be sharing this webinar. We're recording it as we speak on zoom. Uh, it'll be made available on Simon's website, on my website, and you can uh, watch all of this uh, um, later uh, because I think this is going to be a really interesting conversation. So, Simon, you're saying now that in the UK, and again, this does translate everywhere around the world, yeah. we've got, uh, and in, in our specific case, because I think I, I see a lot of myself in you, and that's why I have always time for you, and I'm, I'll always pick up the phone and I'll always talk with you. Um, because you're, you're trying to, to promote high-end dentistry to the general public. And, of course, it, you can't hide the way you look. You can't hide, you know, the way that you live your life. You can't hide the fact that you're successful and that portrays itself. So that one brings a lot of jealousy, which brings a lot of haters. And that's, that happens in every industry. But if you're a pop singer or whatever, or something else, it's, it's you know... But now you're a dentist. Then on top of it, you're lecturing. So you have to be part of the scientific advancement, so on and so forth. And that also does create a little bit of jealousy as well because oh, why is he on stage and not me? Has to be his connections, has to be his contacts. Can't be because he's a hardworking guy and he's, you know, documents his whole yeah. work and, you know, he's not down at the pub. He's on his home in the computer organizing all the slides because people yeah. don't know how much work goes into setting up a lecture. So much. And then on top of it, you're not allowed... Um, no, so then you're, you're, you're putting less content on social media, fear of getting criticism because you're a good guy and you want to actually go out there and answer everybody because you're a pleaser like me. You want everybody. You want to answer everybody. And then you've got these negative things from people. And it's, and it's, so that's one source of stress. And then on top of it, you've got your own dental council or dental system, an organization that hasn't got your back. So the level of fear that is pervading the dental community, I believe, you know, specifically in the UK, is one of the toughest in the world. And if you are a public figure in dentistry in the UK, it makes it even tougher. If you are successful, I'm not going to name any names today, but we've all got very highly successful friends as dentists. And everybody that I talk to privately, they're all feeling it, man. So I'm thinking, yeah. how is this good for dentistry? How is this good for the patients at the end of the day in the UK if this fear is not allowing dentists to do more advanced techniques, use more advanced technology? Wh why would they even want to invest in training and education? Everybody's going to want to be the lowest common denominator of dentistry. The NHS yeah. then has to foot the bill on that. I actually believe financially trolling dentists and being negative to dentistry is costing the UK taxpayer billions and billions at the end of the year. That's my personal opinion. I think yeah. it's insane what's going on. Well, it's it's certainly uh, leading to a mental health epidemic within the profession. Um, and um, Kyle Stanley did a really good sort of twelve part things that, he, and it's exactly the same thing that you're doing right now. I feel like I'm getting counselling myself, to be honest, because <laughs> it's exactly the things that I hey, that's that's fine. That and, I feel you know myself. and the fact that you're you're open about that. You know, when everybody thinks that life is perfect and beautiful, man, I, I, yeah. commend, I commend you. I respect you for that. And uh, I hope you give courage to a lot of people because I've had counseling myself in times of trouble as well. I did it for two years back in 2013 and 14, and it really helped me. So how does that, you know, how's that helping you? 
Well, I, I, I haven't had counselling um, and I haven't had therapy, but it's, it's actually something that I've been seriously it's, it's considering. No, 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 no. I, I, it's something that I feel like I need, to be honest with you, because I don't, I don't, I don't deal with deal stuff with well, well. Uh, from an emotional point of view. When, any, when anything isn't perfect, I, I, don't, I don't deal with it as strongly as I would, strongly as I would like to. Oh, we've lost you. I don't. Um, and like, let's, just take, let's just take this whole COVID pandemic as a prime example. I've worked my whole life to control my whole environment and I, I feel like I have done that effectively. My practice is running, running, running well, well and I'm, I'm doing the sort of dentistry yeah, I want to do and, and everything. And I've got a lovely family. I've, I've controlled my environment as much as possible. And then bam, COVID comes through and just bulldozes through all of that and uh, and takes the control away from us. And I think I need, I need to, I think therapy would be good for me to learn how to accept the things that I can't control, which I think is a very important skill for people to have. Uh, and it's probably one that I don't possess. What's stopping you from getting counseling? Uh, traditionally, I would have used the excuse of time, to be honest. Uh, I just haven't got around to doing it. You know, I... One of my associates actually recommended a really good uh, therapist that she had used. Um, and uh, I think uh, that would be... That's probably what I'm going to do, to be honest with you, because I think... It's like anything. It's like, it's like exercise, right? You have to, like, learn the skills and then practice them and then you become proficient at them. Donald Andrew Lewis just wrote on our Instagram feed, some of the very top dentists in the world have been through counselling. Some speak very open about it. They're at the top of their game afterwards. Thank you, Donald, for that. And, you know, I, I've just, I've never, I've never said this publicly because you don't really get to talk about mental health, but I did counseling. And again, you know, I was doing TV shows before Facebook. And, you know, I, I, I was very famous before Facebook and social media was invented. And the only feedback I would get was from, you know, uh, the, 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 um, the ratings in the newspaper the next day. And, of course, you know, the TV show... I did seven seasons of makeover TV shows. So when the last one aired in 2010, 2011, now Facebook's a thing. And there wasn't certain levels of social etiquette as there are today. There are, there, there's a lot more rules of social etiquette online, you know, for social media than there was back in, it was the Wild West back in 2012. Yeah. And, and I, man, Portuguese dentists, they were mean, man. They were mean. I went into a depression of this. I suffered. Every time my phone would go off, uh, I would, I would, my, uh, my heart rate would go up. My pulse would go up. I'd start sweating. I had sweaty hands. I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't sleep. Yeah. And then you become obsessed by wanting to control these, this negative uh, 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 things. Story. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something that I have because of hindsight. That was already eight, nine years ago. I did have some counseling. A few things that I do. Anybody on social media gives me a rude comment anywhere, I instantly block them on everything. But every platform, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, I block them. I don't even, I mean, the, the minute I read it and my heart rate goes up, I block them, period. I don't care who they are. Just because you've got access to me on social media, because I'm generous enough to put myself out there, my thoughts and my beliefs and my, and I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I'm, I'm human just like you, you know? It's like, but I'm trying, I'm trying just like you, Simon. We're trying to teach and educate and pull things up because- and help people, get, yeah. And help people and inspire people. And God knows you're damn hard working, you know? And uh, I was talking to Mike Apper the other day, Christian Coachman. All these guys have got it, man. And the amount of jealousy, the hatreds, the haters, it's, it's crazy. You know, yeah. but, um, so the, my first rule is block if you're rude. The second one is, uh, to block every, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm ruthless. I'm ruthless. Um, the second one is, um, that, that I did, I, I did go through counseling and, um, what I try and do on my personal level is I try and stay away from anything that is, how could I say it? that's too specific? All right. So let me try and explain this. And, and, and even if you look at slow dentistry, as you know, you're a global ambassador for slow dentistry. If you look at the four cornerstones of slow dentistry, which, by the way, just for the record, was registered by me in 2010. 
Anybody's like, because there's some other people that I have proof that it was registered, the dot com in 2010, way before anybody was ever talking about this. Okay, so let's just continue talking on that one. So um, we kept it very simple, four basic cornerstones. And um, even those four, a lot of people are like, oh, but that, you know, even four basic cornerstones, but what are they? Uh, sign valid consent, you can't argue that. Waiting for anesthetic to take full effect, you can't argue that. Yeah. Uh, disinfecting an operatory in between appointment, I thought you couldn't argue that. And um, the last one is a rubber dam on 100% of root canals. You can't argue that, but still people argue that. Yeah. Now, let's go back. If those things which no dentist in their right mind should be arguing with, imagine if you're talking about something that's pretty complex. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, most dentists on earth don't look like you. Second, most dentists on earth don't have the practice you have, don't have the technology you have, don't have the education you have, the patients that can afford the treatment you have, don't have the, the, you know, the acceptance rate you have, and aren't willing to mentally understand how much work it took you and your family to build that and to get to there. And yes, there's a huge measure of luck involved, but it takes a lot of hard work to be that lucky. Now, um, if you're very specific about certain things in a field, everybody's going to have an opinion about it. So what I do is I tend to be, when I talk about a message in dentistry, I always tend that my, that I always try and craft my message. A, it has to be real. I have to feel it. I have to believe it. And second, because if you believe in something, if you truly believe in something, then it's, re- you know, then it, for, at least for you, it's real. But I, I, all of my messages are very generic in the sense that I want my grandma, who's no longer with us, but I'd like a, 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 a non-dental or even dental-related person to understand it, as well as a Harvard professor. Yes, yeah, so it's more micro than a micro type. There you go. Yeah. Because I think if you want micro, come and see one of my lectures, man. Send me a private email. Send me a direct message. If you are polite, if you introduce yourself, if you are kind, use a language that is respectful, and you can, you can tell me I'm wrong in any language you want, I will discuss with you. If you are rude, if you use short, aggressive, imperative, without you know, caps and all of that, and you don't introduce yourself, you're getting blocked, period. Yeah. Okay? And you'd be surprised how many dentists, I mean, uh, there's a few dentists out there that I blocked just because they piss, they piss me off, just the way they are, their whole thing. And I was getting obsessed by following them, and I just blocked them many years ago. My wife helped me with that, never stressed again. So there's yeah. a lot of really superstar dentists that I just don't follow. Because uh, <laughs> I like, you know. But anyway, so you get to set who you want to follow and who you want to watch on social media. But I think that's how I've managed it myself, Simon, is um, I try and be macro on social media, because it's harder to fight, it's harder to fight light than it is a laser. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if your if your message is a laser beam, then it's very open to interpretation. But if it's just generic light, you can't really argue that point. Yeah. And that's how I protected myself. So blocking people and trying to be macro in my online message. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice. Yeah. So I wanted to um, talk a little bit about. Um, changing the subject and to all to all the mean people out there just to sum this up stop being an asshole be nice <laughs> stop being an asshole you know it's like nobody likes an asshole okay they, they, the world is going through pain like it's never been through before everybody's stressed just stop it man just be, be nice yeah. be nice man be nice if you you know to be nice you'd be surprised that you know how just being nice to somebody I know Simon will go out of his way to help you, uh, uh, you know, so just- As you've done for me many times. I, I'll, you know, and forgiveness is a huge part of everybody's uh, thing, you're, you know, because we're, we're dentists, we're compassionate by, by default. Simon, talk to me about your new product that's hit the market, which has also created a lot of jealousy from a lot of people. Um, it's the Parlor Toothpaste. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm in love with the brand. I'm in love with the product. I'm in love oh, with you, you know, I'm a big fan of Rona. 
And if she's hearing us, a big shout out to Rona, also an ambassador for Slow Dentistry. And who's the third party there? And tell me about this product. What is it all about? Yeah, so Paula, uh, myself, Rona, Eskander, and uh, Dr. Adarsh, thank you, who is, uh, just to give you a bit of an insight into ads, he's, he owns uh, seven clinics across, across uh, the London area, one of them on Harley Street. Um, he's, he's much more retiring and, uh, private than myself and Rona, but clinically he's an incredible and, uh, he's actually, he's one of those guys that everyone in the industry in, in UK, in the UK knows. And he's sort of the go-to guy to call when you've got a question about, uh, for me, it's always been, I'm having this difficulty with my business. What should I do? And he's just got such a level head on him. He's a, he's an incredible businessman. And uh, What's actually, his name again? As well. sorry. What's his name again? Adarsh, thank you. And how old is he? Uh, he is, I think he's about 38. Wow. And he's achieved all of that. That's quite amazing, man. Yeah, he's, um, so he, his, I, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me telling his story, but he, um, he bought a clinic with some, co- with some friends, uh, I think almost straight out of dental school on the King's Road in New York. So on one of the, one of the most sort of premium real estate you could buy. And he, he was, it was when Google AdWords had just become big. And he's always been like, he's always been sort of one step ahead of the curve on what the next big thing's going to be in, in that sort of business sphere. And um, he sort of invested really heavily on AdWords when they were super, super cheap. And you could get big cases, veneer cases at that time, implant cases for very low costs per clip. And um, yeah, I think he sort of built his built his empire from there. So, um, so yeah, he's always been my uh, one of my mentors uh, from a business point of view. I met him through the BACD. And uh, anyway, me and me and Rona uh, had been chatting about this toothpaste thing, and I, I'm an Oral B ambassador, um, and Rona was a, um, a Philips uh, a Philips ambassador, and also uh, she'd done some stuff for Regenerate and Sensodyne in the past. Um, and we both were very, very passionate about the environment. I love the sea. Anytime I'm by the ocean, like I'm so jealous when I see you cycling down the footpath next to the ocean. I just think that is one day I'll, one day I'll get there because it's my dream to live by the ocean. But um, I'm most happy when I'm either by the sea, on the sea, in the sea, in nature. That's where I feel most um, at peace with the world. And um, so I'm very passionate about the environment and... I didn't really realize, I've been looking for ways to improve the impact of dentistry on the world from an environmental point of view. And obviously there's loads of single use plastics that we have to use for health and safety reasons. And um, there's sort of small ways that you can make improvements within your practice to make it more green and more eco. But the biggest impact we're having in dentistry on the world environmentally is the plastic crisis that we are a part of in recommending toothpaste for our patients because those tubes in 99% of cases are single use plastic. Everyone in the world uses them and they either go into landfill or the ocean. So they, they, they think the figure is around 1.5 billion per year annually that goes into landfill or the ocean, which is an astronomical figure. Um, and so that's our biggest plastic impact on the environment so we we sort of looked around at what the alternatives were was it a a more recyclable tube was it a a, um was there any way to make that tube sort of um, possible and unfortunately recycling's recycling is great obviously i'm a big advocate of recycling but unfortunately a lot of things that you think are being recycled are actually not and a lot of things that you think can be recycled, when you actually delve yeah. down into the details, it's not real. Uh, and it might be sort of 20% recyclable, or, uh, sorry, I forgot some people get past the back. <laughs> um, and um, so, yeah, so basically we thought the best thing that we can do is be reusable. If you're reusable, then you, you don't have an environmental impact. And so that's where we came up with the glass jar with the aluminium lid, completely plastic-free packaging. Even the label is biodegradable. Um, and it's been on the market for how long now? Since January the 20th. Well, I think, first of all, I think it's amazing. And moreover, it's creating awareness, you know, about uh, uh, zero waste dentistry. You know, I, yeah. I, I'm, I put that hashtag out there, zero waste dentistry, a while back. 
You did. And I hope that you uh, continue to inspire a lot of companies, uh, you know, maybe the big guns to come out and also that's what we need, yeah. do that, you know, because that's going to happen. And, I, you know, the world is going to change very, very rapidly uh, within the next 10 years. Um, and I really do commend you for that. It, it's, 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 it's so, so, so important. I mean, we can take that discussion elsewhere. After a big surgery, the amount of stuff that goes into the waste I mean, oh, unfortunately, really? this COVID virus is creating a huge amount of waste because, I mean, every time I post it on my Facebook today, you go in for an emergency. I've been, I've probably done it four times in the last two weeks. People that really are, you know, abscesses, at, you know, mass, massive, urgent uh, situations that can't be medicated. And the amount of protection that goes into protecting yourself that then all has to be disposed. I would urge any company in the world to make biodegradable COVID-19 protection outfits. That would be uh, something just like you, I share the passion for the, for the ocean. Um, and last but not least, man, I want to talk a little bit about um, the BACD meeting in, in November. I mean, everything looks like it's still going to happen, right? It hasn't been cancelled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, obviously, <laughs> if November's done, then I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Looking forward to um, that, man. Uh, I really am. You've got a lot of you've got an amazing lineup. Do you want to talk about any of the other speakers that are coming? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So we've got so on the uh, on the Friday, it's it's yourself and uh, Elizabeth Bateman, uh, who's the um, I think she in April will be the president of the AACD. Um, so that's really exciting. Haven't heard her speak. The AACD, before. American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So she's the president. She's, I think she's president-elect at the moment. She's about to be the president. Um, so that's really exciting. She apparently is amazing. I haven't seen her speak before, but um, really my colleagues have seen her when they've gone to the AACD, and she's going to be amazing. Um, we've got Howie and Mark speaking together on the Saturday, um, which should be epic. We've got um, Anthony Matt coming over all the way from Australia. Uh, he's doing a hands-on on Thursday as well. Uh, we've got Amanda Say, um, who's now a fellow of the BACD, of, of the uh, American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. Um, we've got Professor uh, Edelhoff. We've got a whole afternoon on like, in, you're like this, on uh, ortho-restorative interface, ortho-digital restorative interface, so pre-ortho um, alignment prior to restorative work, um, which is uh, very kindly sponsored by Align. And um, yeah, it's going to be epic. I'm really, really excited. I, 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 we've, I'm going to play my A game. Get ready. <laughs> you always do. You always do. No, I'm pumped. I'm pumped for your talk. It's going to be great. Yeah, I gave. A, I had a really cool lecture now in Chicago. The last great lecture at the uh, the midwinter. Uh, I was invited by the American Prosthodontic Society. My our good friend Carlo Poggio, he was presiding over that. And, uh, uh, Nazari was there. It's a bunch of like top speakers and um, yeah, big you know, like Mini Brothers and a bunch of other guys. And you know, one of the good things about being a speaker on stage is that you get this. I, you know, I they, everybody's pulling everybody, and I, I think that you know tying this into our initial conversation about mental stress. I mean, I don't know how you feel about this, but the camaraderie amongst dental speakers. I mean, some of the greatest minds in dentistry in the world. You know, my mentor is Maurice Salama, David Garber, Ronald Goldstein, and Henry Salama, and, you know, the, the guys at Dental XP. That's where I learned the craft of public speaking. Yep. I'd say Ma Maurice Salama more than anybody. Um, I'm very proud uh, to be uh, on Dental XP platform for 10 years now, you know, almost 11, since 2009. Yeah, yeah, I've watched. I, I love XP. I've watched. I've watched all your videos on there. <laughs> uh, and uh, when I watch, it's um, you know to get the recognition from those guys, and I know you getting it as well. You know, the top guys in the world respect you. So whenever you're feeling down, man, whenever you've got some little troll in Middle England who's you know no disrespect to Middle England because my family's from Manchester okay so as, as, is, Me as is Megan as is Megan so you'll be careful yeah, what you say I, I can legitimately say Little England you know without offending anybody and a big shout out to all my my fam no, not many people know that my mother's a redhead and half of my British family live in the Moors you know so Blame. outside of Oldham Saddleworth that region yeah yeah I love that area man you know uh, Pudding and chips and gravy and what they call it, <laughs> mushy peas. I love that. But to say when you've got some guy out there trolling you just because 
he's angry or bitter, um, block him, uh, forgive him. When you have time, reach out and find out why. Maybe even now during this time that you have at home, I know that there's one or two people that have made it uh, just because they're bored and probably don't have uh, a lot of work uh, in their average day to day uh, to, um, to criticize and attack the work that you're doing. Give them a call, man. Find out, you know. I got yeah. your back. I got your back, bro. And trust me, there's a lot know, of heavy hitters. Out. There's a lot of heavy hitters out there that have got your back as well. All right. So, uh, so where where, where, do you, where do you think we're going next? Then, where, uh, what are your thoughts on on how we get back to work? Well, that's a great way to to, to sum this up. Um, like I told Christian Coaching Man, nobody has a clue. Yeah. Um, I I know what I wish, and I know what everybody wishes is that our families and our friends are safe. That uh, that our teams, we managed to come out of this with the same teams that we went into it with. Yeah. I think dentistry is going to change a lot. And as you know, uh, slow dentistry is one of my passions. Um, and you're, you've been a staunch advocate. In November last year, we went and gave you, me, Rona, Jamil Gardi, Karek Ferran, Zaki Kanan, and uh, Marcus Engelshalk, my and a few other people went and we gave a, a, a conference uh, in London. You know, yeah, very happy very that happy Voco, Voco sponsored, sponsored that for us. us. We even got a mention in uh, the Daily Telegraph and on Sky yeah. News. Uh, but a lot of people were kind of joking, like, oh, ha, 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 10 minutes disinfection in between appointments, that will never stick. They're not yeah. laughing that much now, are they? Because my disinfection is going to be... And then showing it's going to be vital. Yeah. So this is what I have to say. It's not going to be, it's going to, it's not that, it's going to be, a, it's going to compound. Uh, CareStream Dental came out with a study last month. And unfortunately, I was supposed to go to the US and actually talk about this with the, with the team. Um, they did a study in seven different countries and they proved, proved, 5,000 different people, but it was done to the general public. Two out of three patients believe that a dentist that uses digital technology is better equipped to provide better care than one who doesn't. So the tides have changed. And what's happening now, there we go. And as you know, I'm the vice president of the Digital Dentistry Society. And I'm a staunch advocate of digital technology, much like yourself. And that's why we connect on a clinical level. Yeah, you know, you have to have the 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 science and the the basics have to be there. You know, digital, as Christian says, digital doesn't make you a better dentist. You know, if anything, it helps you control uh, complications. And all of the speakers at our meeting in London did a great job of showing how digital can help you speed up some things, allowing you to slow down in other things. Yeah, absolutely. Here's my take on it. After the outbreak of COVID, not only do you have to be digitally orientated, ethically uh, bound in your treatment planning, but you have to be practicing slow dentistry because whereas 90% of the population were looking for price when looking for a dentist, I would say that now 90% of the population will say, well, price is important, but I actually also don't want to get sick from the guy that was there before me. And yeah. only clinics that are taking the correct time to disinfect the operatory in between appointments will succeed. So that means that a lot of practices in the UK and around the world uh, are going to have to rethink their business strategy very, very fast. I think it's going to raise the prices of, of a lot of things because yeah. protect, you know, uh, uh, protecting yourself and your team and your staff and ultimately your patient against cross-contamination is expensive and takes time, and that time costs money. So anybody wanting to find out more can sign up to slowdentistry.com and, uh, and find out to slowdentistry.com, www.slowdentistry.com, and, and find out more about this. Um, and I urge all of those doctors out there that have been doing drill, fill, play the bill 30 times a day, rethink strategy fast. You will pull through this. You will manage to treat your patients. You can't treat everybody every day, but the ones you treat, you have to treat safely, securely, ethically. And now due to COVID virus uh, outbreak, you have to treat 
with, without the risk of passing any risks uh, to the following uh, patient, yourself, your team, and ultimately your family at home, because that's what yeah. we all uh, put in the hours to work so we can all have a nice life back home. Right, Simon? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, man. Cool, man. Cool.